Let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. The universal leader in the year 2001 is born of a woman. Bible class lecture delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. Bible text, Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 to the end. Quote, this is the time of the fulfillment of the revelation of St. John, John the Divine, which is found in the book of Revelation chapter 1 to 22. If you read the Bible from Genesis to Malachi, you will not find the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is because it is the Old Testament and the Old Testament speaks about the things of old. Here, the prophets prophesied about his coming, and the prophecies are fulfilled from St. Matthew to St. Jude. If you read through these chapters, you will not see Brotherhood of the Cross and Star in its full context. When you read the book of Revelation, you will understand that Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is the Kingdom of God. Today, it is my intention to reveal to you the mysteries concerning Jehovah God and His Christ. I have come to reveal to you the second advent of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to reveal He who has brought salvation to the sons of men and has saved them from ruin. We have been told that Adam was created from the clay of the earth. It would have been possible for God to make Adam to descend from the sky. There has never been a time since the creation of the world that a human being has descended from the sky into this mundane world. Adam was first created from the dust of the earth. Apart from him, all human beings are born through the womb of a woman. All of you know that Eve is the first mother on earth. It would have been possible for God to cause Eve to descend from the sky, but you have been told that she was created from the rib of Adam, during which time God sent Adam into a very deep sleep, and a rib from his side was used to create Eve. At no time has any human being ever flown down from above like a bird into this mundane plane. If this was to happen, where would such a person land? Before Moses was born, his mother was pregnant for nine months. Before he was born, there was numerous prophecies about his birth. The prophecies said that he was going to be a prophet greater than, greater in power than that of Pharaoh. When Pharaoh heard this, he sent out his soldiers to kill all the small children aged from three months downward. This was the first massacre of the innocent children. During this massacre, Pharaoh hoped that Moses would be killed. All the prophecies in the Old Testament were prophecies about this great prophet. You are all aware of the mysteries surrounding the birth of Moses. Immediately, the mother knew that her child was going to be killed. She quickly made a basket and placed the child inside it and carried it to the riverside. There, she placed the basket by the river and instructed her daughter to watch the basket and see what would happen. Suddenly, a miracle happened. Pharaoh's daughter came to take bath in the river and discovered the basket with Moses inside it. Moses' sister then emerged and asked the daughter of Pharaoh whether she needed a maid to care for the child. She accepted and Moses' sister went and informed her mother who came and took charge of nursing Moses. Said Matthew chapter 1 verses 22 to the end. Now 
All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. When you read about the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ from St. Matthew chapter 1, verse 22 to the end, you will discover that the prophecy of Jeremiah, you will discover the prophecy of Jeremiah. At this time, David and the other patriarchs were not yet born, but there was a prophecy about the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. The statement that the angel made, God with us, means that our Lord Jesus Christ is God himself. It would not have been so easy to say that Mary delivered God. This was a way of camouflaging him. The real truth is that our Lord Jesus Christ is the Almighty God. Just as sensible people cannot go out naked, in the same way God cannot appear naked. He must cover himself with human flesh so that they may not be easily identified. Can you see how people are confused? We are told that a virgin will conceive and bring forth a male child and his name shall be called Emmanuel. St. Luke chapter 1, verse 28 to 31. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail Mary, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this would be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. This vision was given to Mary during her service in the temple. At the age of seven, God revealed himself to her. Mary had taken the vow of a Nazarite, which is a period during which a person devotes his or her time to serving in the temple. It was during this time that Mary had the revelation that she would give birth to God. If Mary conceived and gave birth to God, who do you think will descend from the sky? If Moses, who was a brother to Aaron, was born by a woman, how do you expect anyone to emerge from the sky? It is a very simple thing for a host of people to come down from the sky, but the result would be that all of us on earth will run away. Even if one was to descend from the sky, knowing that the earth is owned and occupied by certain persons, where will such a person stay since everywhere has been occupied? What would be his clan? To which family would he belong? When man is in spirit, he is like a flame of fire by nature. That is why he, he passes through the womb of a woman, which is an antidote. This is the reason why God has created the womb of a woman as a passage through which all individuals, angels and God himself, passes into the world. There is no other way through which human being angel spirit and god can pass into the world except through the womb of a woman man is the heaven and woman is the earth therefore everybody has to pass through a man into the woman being born into the earth plain so that god may be glorified god can call human beings to be born through a man but then what would be the usefulness of a woman just as Eve passed through Adam, it is also possible for human beings to enter the world in the same way. If it happens in this way, 
what would be the usefulness of women? A person who emerges from the sky would not like to take any instructions from anyone. God who is knowledgeable in all aspects of things has caused human beings to come down through the mother and father who will control him and who he will respect. Acts chapter 1 verses 9 to 11 And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfast towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. This passage read out to you has confused the whole world. The explanation of this passage is that he will come back as a human being. But the world interpret it to mean that he will emerge from the sky and come down to the earth. It appears to me that the people of the world have ears but cannot hear. It is for this reason that I want to explain and expatriate on these things so that you may know the theme of our lecture this evening. That the person who will rule this world is born of a woman. Two angels have borne eloquent testimony that our Lord Jesus Christ will come back as a human being. There is no other way that God can come down on earth except by passing through the womb of a woman. Who can endure the spirit and which spirit can tolerate you? If you were to see the spirit, If you were to see the Spirit, would you be able to withstand it? Would you say that Spirit has patience? I want to point out to you, and I have not added nor subtracted from the Word of God written in the Scripture. I want to make it quite clear to you that if there is any person among you who is still looking at the sky to see someone descending down. He is wasting his time because until doomsday, such a person will never come. What happened is exactly what had been prophesied by the prophets that a virgin will conceive in her womb and bring forth a child who will be called Emmanuel. St. Luke chapter 2, verses 5 to 9. To be taxed with Mary is exposed wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were sore afraid. Now that Mary had brought forth a child called Jesus, who has saved us from all trouble and encumbrances of the world, the ruins we were in and has taken dominion over death and taken the key of hate. Is this not that small child called Jesus who was crucified on the cross and on the third day rose from the dead? Is this not that small baby who was born as Jesus? Have you yourself the ability to resurrect from the dead? Was our Lord Jesus Christ the only child of his mother? I want to show you that eggs are eggs 
but some are rotten and not everybody is the same. The main reason why the Jews started to ask questions and disputed among themselves was because they said, albeit, we know this man, whence he is, but when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. When the Jews saw the, saw the child Jesus, they regarded him as an ordinary human being because he had been born through a woman. It had already been said when Adam disobeyed God and fell short of the glory of God, he pleaded with God to return to him. But God told him that unless a holy and precious blood was shed, he would not return. And the signs of gold, frankincense, and myrrh would mark his return. When our Lord Jesus Christ came, all these signs were seen. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ was the real God who came down on earth. He created man. Can angels do it? Who else has the power to create man? He is the person who has the power to create. When Adam and Eve derailed, defiled themselves through the sin of fornication, God let them, God left them and they were driven away from the Garden of Eden. Therefore, there was no way for them to atone for their sins. They used the blood of sheep, cows, etc., but they were not made perfect. He had made a promise that he would only return when a holy and precious blood was shed, and God and gold, frankincense and burr would be the sign of his coming. He stated that he would be pierced with a sword, and the signs would be the water, blood, and spirit. When he came as the Son of Man, the Son of God and God himself, the Jews stoned him because he called himself the Son of God. Had he told them that he was God himself, they would have laughed at him and regarded him as a demented person. How sweet does it sound in people's ears if anyone says that man is God? As you are all sitting down here, if any of you call himself God, even your child will laugh at you and say, Papa, I think you are mad. And because man is created in the image and likeness of God, therefore you cannot equate man to God. Since the creation of the world, can you mention any one person who has been able to accomplish the work that our Lord Jesus Christ has done? Melchizedek, Moses, Elijah, Enoch, and all the other patriarchs came. I want you to mention any one of them who was able to do exactly what our Lord Jesus Christ did. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. It is impossible for anyone to kill God. He himself surrendered his life. St. John chapter 10, verse 17 to 19. Therefore, doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it up again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up. This commandment have I received from my Father. There was a division, therefore, again, among the Jews for these saying. When our Lord Jesus Christ was on the cross, he said, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit, and surrendered his spirit into the hand of the Father. What actually was nailed on the cross were the sins of the whole world. After three days and three nights, the spirit returned into the body of Jesus. Since then, he has continued to exist. Ero erroneously, the church denominations, which have not yet come to the accurate knowledge of the truth, claim that our Lord Jesus Christ was taken up to heaven to sit 
on the right hand of his father. If you look at the firmament, you will not find a dwelling place there. Our Lord Jesus Christ's ascension into what they call heaven can be likened to a person who boards a plane from Calabar to Lagos. On his return, he may decide to return by bus or taxi, but you will be convinced that he is still in Lagos because he has not returned by air. Who actually took away the life of our Lord Jesus Christ? Would you say that it was Pilate or the Jews who killed our Lord Jesus Christ? It was the sins of the whole world that our Lord Jesus Christ crucified on the cross and not himself. After his death, the sins of mankind were atoned for so that man may be perfect and remain undefined so that Christ may come in and dwell in him since man is the temple of the Most High God. That same sin which defiled you and made it impossible for God to dwell in you is what you have gone back to commit. When you begin to shout on top of your voice saying that Olumba Olumba Obu is God, I know that some of you are deceivers because I know your thoughts your movements and deeds. Philip asked our Lord Jesus Christ to show him the Father, which means that Philip regarded our Lord Jesus Christ as, a, as an ordinary human being. You always shout, wonderful leader. I say, shut up your mouth because you do not know the type of being that you are dealing with. Forget about who I am and put my teachings into practice because this will give you salvation. Do not give me any name. I am not a prophet. I am not Moses, Elijah, or Jesus Christ. I am a supernatural teacher. I want you to put into practice the teachings which I give you, and this will reveal to you who I am. The lessons I have brought to you are supernatural. It surpasses all the wisdom of the whole world put together. Had you humbled yourself to take in these lessons, you would have found yourself where you did not expect. St. John chapter 14 verses 8 to 11. Philip said unto him, Lord, shew us the Father and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, have I been so long with you, yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The word that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Do you really understand this statement? Philip had been with our Lord Jesus Christ all this time, and yet, and yet, Do you really understand this statement? Philip had been with our Lord Jesus Christ all the time and yet he won't and yet he went and asked him, Show us the Father and he sufficed us. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I have been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. This means that our Lord Jesus Christ is God himself, who created heaven and earth. But when you pray and say, 
our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It is possible that you think that God is living in the desert or in the moon, in the sun, in the stars or in a secret chamber. Our Lord Jesus Christ had said, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. In St. John chapter 3, verses 11 to 13, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we know. We speak that we do know. And testify that we have seen. And ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. When I tell you that I am delivering this gospel from the high heavens, you begin to contemplate in your mind that what type of statement is this? No person has ever come down from heaven except he who is from heaven. When he speaks here on earth, you can hear his voice everywhere in the universe.